The souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven, the saints who followed the footsteps of Christ. And since for love of him they shed their blood, they now exult with Christ forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Sixtus II, uh, Pope and Companions. I'll tell you a little bit about them in our homily. So my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, O Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray, Almighty God, make us docile in believing the faith and, cor and courageous in confessing it, that just as you granted St. Sixtus and his companions that they might lay down their lives for the sake of your word and in witness to Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Nahum. See upon the mountains there advances the bearer of good news, announcing peace. Celebrate your feasts, O Judah. Fulfill your vows, for nevermore shall you be invaded by the scoundrel he has completely destroyed. The Lord will restore the vine of Jacob, the pride of Israel. Though ravagers have ravaged through them and ruined the tendrils, Woe to the bloody city, all lies, full of plunder, whose looting never stops. The crack of the whip, the rumbling sound of wheels, horses a gallop, chariots bounding, cavalry charging, the flame of the sword, the flash of the spear, the many slain, the heaping corpse, the endless bodies to stumble upon. I will cast filth upon you, disgrace you and put you to shame till everyone who sees you runs from you saying Nineveh is destroyed who can pity her where can one find any to console her the word of the Lord it is I who deal death and give life I who deal death and give life close at hand is the day of their disaster and their doom is rushing upon them. Surely the Lord shall do justice for his people. On his servants he shall have pity. It is I who deal death and give life. Learn then that I, I alone am God, and there is no God besides me. It is I who bring both death and life. I will inflict wounds and heal them. It is I who deal death and give life. I will sharpen my flashing sword, and my hand shall lay hold of my quiver. With vengeance I will repay my foes and requite those who hate me. It is I who give death and life. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. 
What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay each one according to his conduct. Amen, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Um, it's this line from today's gospel which helps us to sort of understand uh, the first reading. Our first reading comes from the book of the prophet Nahum. You may not even know that there is a prophet Nahum. Uh, he's one of the minor prophets which we find towards the end of the Old Testament. Uh, his entire book is about two and a half pages long. And the prophet Nahum is writing uh, in the middle of about, about the year 621 B.C. This is about when we think he published uh, his book, either 621 or 623. There's a little debate. But he was writing uh, sent by God to foretell the destruction of the city of Nineveh. And if we remember Nineveh, the story of Jonah, uh, Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire, that Assyria was threatening Israel with constant violence, constant um, pressure, all kinds of terrible deeds and atrocities that the Assyrians um, put up against the people of God. And what we find is that God, in some way, was calling them to repentance as Jonah goes to the city of Nineveh, calls them to uh, repentance. But the Ninevites and the Assyrians are lusting after power and lusting after uh, blood. And so what we see is, woe to the bloody city, all lies full of plunder whose looting never stops. That the, the city of Nineveh, as they would conquer these little towns, villages, kingdoms around them, they would take all the plunder, they would bring back to the city, and the city was enormously wealthy. I mean, imagine we're in the 600s BC. The city wall was eight miles long, eight miles all the way around the city, right? An enormously large city. And here, what is uh, Nahum foretelling? that as powerful as your city is, as much riches as you have, as much power as you have amassed, you will be destroyed because of the, the violence you have done towards God in just a short amount of time. And indeed, that's what happened. Uh, the city of Nineveh falls within a year or two after uh, Nahum's prophecy. And today, we don't talk about the Assyrians anymore. We don't talk about the city of Nineveh because it's completely destroyed. And so what, we've, what Israel has come to understand is that the wrath and the vengeance of God is real in the sense uh, that God always wins, that the opponents of God uh, always that when we seek to gain the world, the opponents of God will always be destroyed because in the end, God is the victor. And this is certainly the story of our saints today, St. Sixtus II and his companions. St. Sixtus uh, was arrested on August the 6th, uh, about the year 257. He was celebrating Mass, he was the Pope, celebrating Mass with his deacons, uh, in the catacombs of St. Callistus, and the emperor Valerian had ordered the arrest and the killing of all the Christians in the city of Rome. And so it was known that the Pope Sixtus and his deacons were celebrating the Mass uh, in the catacombs. They were arrested and put to death the day after on August the 7th. But what happens, right? That this small, fledgling, little church in the city of Rome, the small Christians against the enormity of the Roman Empire, who wins? 
God does. Because eventually, by the witness and the shedding of their blood, the entire Roman Empire becomes converted and subject to the will of God. And so this is what Jesus is telling us today. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? That the world is not more powerful than God. That the enormity of God's power, but the depth of God's love and mercy teaches us that we have nothing to fear. Even though it may seem like at times the world is powerful, the prophet Nahum and Saint Sixtus and their witness reveal to us the truth that the cross of Christ is more powerful uh, than all of our enemies, that the cross of Christ is more powerful than even death itself. And so for us today, there's nothing to fear except doing the will of God. Amen. And so together we stand as we bring our prayers and our needs before our Heavenly Father. We pray for the church that she may always proclaim the great majesty and power of God. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the seminarians of the Diocese of Lake Charles as they return to seminary and prepare for their new year. May the Lord support them in their formation and discernment. We pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for the sick and the suffering, especially the many from our own parish that the Lord may grant them the gift of healing. We pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for good weather for our farmers and for protection from storms. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for those who have died, especially those recent deceased from our parish, that the Lord may grant them the gift of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Divine and Heavenly Father, we bring before you our prayers as we ask you to hear them, grant them as they are in accord with your will. We make them through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, we'll come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be acceptable by you, Lord. May the sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sin. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Glenn John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Be 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep you safe. See how rich is the saints' reward from God. They died for Christ and will live forever. Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.